Hello and welcome to a let's play on a game that you guys probably weren't expecting on my channel, or at least not for a while. I've always said I wanted to do Medieval 2 at some point, but never really knew when, never really set a date for it. But uh, here we are, playing the Third Age Divide and Conquer mod. So Third Age, the actual mod, which takes place in Middle Earth, obviously, and then Divide and Conquer is a sub mod that uh, increases the amount of factions, make the game uh, more lore friendly, has more units, etc. Just in general, seems like a pretty big improvement. So, I'm going to have to go over a few points before I start the campaign, so if you don't want to listen to any then, I'll probably put a time stamp on where you want to skip to, to get into the actual game. But, I um, want to start off with my inexperience of Medieval 2. Uh, as most of you know, I have never really played Medieval 2 in the past. It's not a game that I played when it first released. Uh, I played Rome 1, which is somewhat similar, so I know some of the mechanics, but I'm still going to be uh, new to some other mechanics as well. Um, so keep that in mind. I will probably ask you guys questions as I play the game, so feel free to give me tips and stuff. Uh, do keep in mind that I usually record fairly far in advance, so there's a good chance I won't be able to use anything like that. Right, so that's one point covered. Second point is music that you're currently hearing in the background is not the official soundtrack, because that would give me issues with YouTube. So I have uh, music downloaded from a user, a YouTube user called Adrian von Ziegler. I'll put a link in the description to his channel. He's got like loads of music like this, uh, which fits the theme. Uh, because if I just use the, the music from the actual mod, then I would run into issues with YouTube. Um, and a third point is that I want to cover right now that uh, I will be mispronouncing names. So just get used to that. I don't speak Elvish or anything like that. Uh, and, and, and names have their, like, um, their respective language attached to it. So I don't know, it's hard to... Explain what I mean, but you'll, you'll get it once we get into the game. Anyway, so let's play a game. I'm going to play a very hard, very hard, because that's what the uh, mod recommends doing. We're going to play as the Realm of the Galadrim, um, which is uh, led by Lord Celeborn. Um, and we've got Hall there as our heir. So we start down here. Um, the reason I want to play as the Realm of the Galadrim is because I wanted to play... Because this is my first real campaign in, in any med Medieval 2 game, for that matter. I have played a little bit of this uh, just to get kind of used to what's going on. But um, I want to play something that's relatively easy. Um, the Elves are generally easy because they've got really strong units, especially early game. Um, and that's, well, that's the, that's the biggest reason, right, basically. I also wanted to play with a, a smaller faction, so I didn't want to jump into a faction like Gondor or Rohan. Or Mordor or whichever of the other big factions because I, I want to start off small and and sort of as I go learn what I'm doing so that I don't jump into something massive um, like that so the realm of the Galadrium start with two regions um, in the forest so Lothlorien forest obviously um, so that's the reason I actually thought about going for any of the other uh, factions the, the elven factions the um, uh, woodland realm start up here which is fairly close. There's a, a special script with this mod as well between these two factions. We'll get into that later. Uh, Imladris starts over here, which is basically Rivendell. And then the uh, Grey Havens of Lindon start over here. Um, or is it? No, it's this one actually. Um, the purple one. Uh, which is just really far away from any like stuff, so I didn't really want to go for them. Um, so yeah. That's why we're on the God's Dream. Let's go over the strength and weaknesses real quick. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this, but feel free to do so if you are interested. Um, especially this last bit is like actual sort of lore stuff. Um, our strengths and weaknesses are we have level 4 smithing, which is relatively high. I'm pretty sure 5 is like fairly standard high, and then there's 6 and 7 for some of the dwarf factions. Uh, yeah, these two. Um, so we have 4, which is apparently still a strength, so that's quite good. We have a versatile elite roster. We have excellent archers and a generally strong roster. So that's what I'm, I'm, I was talking about earlier. The elves have just like really good units, except they, the way that they have been made difficult is their units cost a, a shit ton, even in the early game. So money is like going to be an issue right, right away. Our weaknesses are we have very slow recruitment. Uh, because we have such good units, I think even the, the lowest militia type units uh, take two turns to be recruited. We have very expensive units, which is almost the highest you can get in like the weakness thing, because I think uh, the... Realm of Illinois, they have um, incredibly expensive units. We have a small starting domain, as I said, two regions, and we have uh, restricted construction, which I think just means that we can't build castles. Um, or, oh, like, we can build wooden castles, but not, like, higher tier, or we can't build castles at all, I can't remember. And our best unit is apparently the Galadrim Mort Wardens, 
which uh, look like a, an archer ninja type unit. Anyway, uh, without any further ado, oh right, yes, yeah, sorry, I'm playing on long campaign, which is the longest we can go to, of course. Uh, we need to hold a bunch of regions, and we need to destroy the Shadow of Mordor and the Shadow of Mirkwood. So Mirkwood's right here. It's going to be a first target immediately. And the Shadow of Mordor, obviously, Mordor. So they're going to be a little tougher to take that, take out. Anyway, let's jump into the game. Alright, interesting little introduction to our faction. Basically, it's saying you're gonna get fucked by Mordor, so prepare for that. Prepare for a good old fucking Um, So, yeah, basically, I, I think um, the way. It, well, what it was showing us really is that we have like a versus. I don't know, maybe there's no depth to that cutscene. Maybe it's literally just like that, it's a cutscene, but I, I, I like to stick a story from it. It's saying, like, telling us that we have. Um, a, a wide range of units were showing us like infantry was murdering some of the uh, orcs and and archers that were firing at orcs etc but i don't know maybe it was maybe it wasn't telling us anything anyway um i am not going to read this because this is a pretty big set of text but feel free once again to pause the video and read it yourself uh it's probably interesting but i will never find out I will read this though in a military report. My lord, I bring an important message from your military advisors. The flames of war are stirring in all of Middle Earth, but our military inf infrastructure is still still only rudimentary. While militias and conscripts are being levied across our domain, we still lack the equipment, logistical support, and command structure we needed to bring the full might of our armies to bear. Mobilization and general preparations are underway, but it will still be around 15 years before our professional troops are ready to step into the fray. Word shall be sent to you as soon as our infrastructure is ready to support the war effort fully. So what this basically means is that if you've if you've seen any um, any of my divided and para, which means the same thing by the way, divide and conquer I believe, except it's in English, uh, of Rome 2, if you've seen my campaigns on Rome 2 of that mod, then you'll know that there's a system called uh, the reform system, which is essentially like the Roman reforms, etc. However, in this game you've got a similar system where basically after a certain amount of turns we'll be able to build better barracks so we can get better units, but until that point we will only we will be restricted to only certain units. And I think there's a few of those events that happen. So every like so uh, every so many turns, we can build slightly better units. Anyway, so let's have a look at our faction. Um, to begin with, we are currently allied to the Dwarves of Khazad-dûm, which are just to our west. 
Um, and we are enemies of the Shadow of Markwood, which are just to our east. They only currently own Dol Guldor, but they usually expand pretty rapidly because they got a lot of units. So I think that's that's going to be our first target. We're going to go for them immediately. Um, and we're at War of the Orcs of the Misty Mountains, which basically own all of the Misty Mountains. And we are at War of the Bandits and Rebels, as is everyone else. So that's that. Let's have a quick look at our family tree, I suppose. We have Lord Celeborn, Caliborn, Caliborn makes more sense. Of course, married to uh, Galadriel, and we have uh, Haldir, who's uh, currently 16 years old only, uh, as our faction heir. So that's all good. We have a spy, we have a bunch of units available as well, so let's have a quick look at our units uh, that we currently have. So, let's start with more standard Delorean Warders, which are basically our spear militia, although militia in this in the elven sense is not really fair because they're a really good unit. They're they're not they're like a tier above militia, but they're still militia essentially. Um so what I really like about this this um mod is that I'm not sure I don't think this is in the regular game anyway. You've got this information, which I think is in the regular game, but then you've got this at the bottom as well. Um you've got your morale your morale response which is like uh shock resistance, losing your journal, etc. And then for archers, for example, we also have um, your missiles, your range, and your accuracy, which is very good. I don't think that is in the regular game, I'm not sure. Anyway, back to that unit. So we've got an attack of uh, 6, charge of 4, and a total defense of 16, which is just super high in this early game. Then we have our Lorien sentries, which is essentially the sword uh, vari um, variant on the unit. So this one has 6 and 16, this one has 7 and 15, so slightly better attack with slightly lower defense. And of course, not good against Cav. Um, then we have this Gudinen unit, which is a little more special, but still able to be recruited already. It has 12 attack and 14 defense, so not quite as good defensively. Only one point less in all fairness, though. No shield, though. Um, but they have 12 attack, which is just far, far better than any of the other units we currently have available, so that's pretty good. They also have very good morale instead of just good. And there's also uh, a pronunciation that the mod, uh, lead mod guy has added. So these guys are called Gordinen. Gordinen. Okay, I, was, I think I was saying Gurdinen, so Gordinen. All right, I'll probably forget that immediately. And then we have a Lorian archers, which have seven melee attack, seven assault attack, seven by the way melee attack. Nothing to be scuffed at, especially if these guys have the same. But their total defense, of course, much lower at ten, and they have yeah twenty missiles, one hundred seventy meters range, and their uh, accuracy is average. And then we have one final unit, the Elbereth Sentinels, which I'm not sure if that's a general unit. I don't think it is. I'm not quite sure where this unit comes in. Uh, only 37 of them though, and they have 12 melee attack, 11 missile attack, which is super high. I think 13 is the absolute highest, or maybe it's even 12. Can't remember, 12 or 13. Uh, for an archer unit anyway. And uh, this one is 11, and then 28 defense, so just a general really good unit. Morale is very good, locked, which I think means they can't break, technically. Uh, and they're actually exceptional, but we won't be recruiting any of those for a while. Because we need to wait 30, 35 turns before we can even make one if we wanted to. Gonna lower our taxes right now, but first of all. We, so we got a few units. We have um, uh, Haldir plus the Lorian Archers unit in um, Karen Amrof. And we have uh, Caliborn and uh, unit Lorian Archers and Wardens in Karas Galadon, which I think is our capital. Yes, it is. Um, like I said, we're gonna go for these guys immediately. I'm literally gonna make a, a beeline for their capital. So I'm gonna move everyone out Scout and the send them in there. And then we're just gonna literally. Scatter almost give an attack order on this place. Um, I have played this campaign a little bit. I've played a few campaigns a little bit just to get an idea for the game, so I know it's possible to do this. Send our spy up ahead, though. Have a quick look. There's also a town down here somewhere. I'm not exactly sure which we could go for first as well, but I really want to just take these guys out as fast as possible. It might be a bit of a slow start because we we're going to probably siege them out rather than actually go for them, but even so. Right, um, so what we want to do... We want to build a bunch of units, or recruit a bunch of units right away. So I'm going to recruit these two units, the standard units essentially, because I don't really want to pay too much money. We do get free upkeep in this town, and I think in this one too, once we build the Hall of Song. Um, so we're going to build a Hall of Song here, and recruit the currently one archer available, because we have the practice range, but we don't have the town guard here right now. So we can recruit one archer unit. Probably will make the town guard at some point, just so we can recruit a few more units, but... Um, in Karas Galadon, we're making those two units, and we want to build um, possibly the Hall of Music, or possibly something else that gives us more money. Gwyth. I wonder if there's a pronunciation for that too. No, there's not. Good money, but that's a little expensive to build. Um, 
port's really good for money, for tradable goods. We don't ha have too many tradable goods yet, though, I, I imagine. So, yeah, I guess I'll make the Hall of Music here as well. It's a good, it's a good building in general. This, this is where my inexperience co kind of comes in as well, because I'm not actually sur sure what the building income plus 15 means exactly. Does it literally just mean we get an extra 15 bucks a turn? Because if so, that's not really a whole lot, is it? Um, I'll also be recruiting a diplomat at some point, but right now we're not too bothered about that. So we've got 5k left, we're going to go down the drain pretty rapidly once we start moving all of these units out. Because the two units I'm recruiting here are also going to go up to the army. The, the final unit we've got in uh, Karen Amroth, I might keep there, I'm not sure yet exactly what we're going to do with that. Um, but I probably want to keep a unit behind here, maybe even another one at some point. Maybe recruit a, um, a sentry unit here too, but we'll see. Um, I think that's about all we can do for the moment, so... We've got Silk, which is an excellent trade resource. So we do have some trade, but yeah, some right there as well. Um, sorry, this is, again, inexperienced. I'm just, I'm just, I need to have a look around and see if I'm missing anything. But I don't think I am, so... Sire. Yeah, let's just let's keep going. Get into turn two. So there's like this little jingle that plays, which is like from the actual soundtrack as well. But I think it's so short that it won't actually give me any problems with copyright claims. There's a uh, Vale of Anduin Diplomat. I'm actually pretty sure that is Radagast the Brown right there, which is interesting. He's a diplomat for them. Um, I've been watching... I don't know if I already mentioned this. I don't think I have. I've been re-watching the Hobbit movies. So this is one of the things that happens standard in... Uh, like there's, there's a whole bunch of turn one uh, or, or towns being taken by uh, enemies because it's like scripted that they take a town immediately afterwards. So Ephidian has also been reclaimed. And we have our end of turn report. We didn't lose too much money this turn, but we are going to once we start building all these buildings. Follow me. So you're going to keep going there. There's Radagast the Brown. Would you wish to speak to me? Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm rewatching the, the Hobbit right now. Well, Hobbit movies, I should say. And. Um, my, my memory of Middle-earth is relatively fresh, which is what I'm trying to say with that, so that's good. Um, spy. Where are you? There you are. Alright, so we can see we've, they've actually got a few units in there currently, so they've got some Dol Guldur archers, which are... For melee attack, obviously, it doesn't really matter. Free missile attack and six total defense, so not particularly amazing units. The Dol Guldur host a little better with nine attack and nine defense, and their general unit's really, really good. So with 14 attack and 31 defense. Um, and they're a cav unit as well. Only 38 of them, but even so, it's a cav unit. It's basically, this is a Nazgul. And Nazgul can't actually die. If you kill them, they will respawn in the capital a few turns later. However, I'm pretty sure if we kill off their faction, then that doesn't happen anymore. But don't don't quote me on that. I'm not sure entirely. Anyway, yeah, you're going to keep going. Spy. I could put him in there. 58% chance. I might want to do that the turn before we take it. Um... Or the turn before we attack, because maybe we can open the gates. But on the other hand, I, I still I feel like I should probably siege them out, because it'll kill some men on the way as well. Anyway, beyond that, once again, I'll already have a whole lot to do. So, let's end another turn. I think the first few turns are going to go relatively fast. Especially once I start besieging them. Alright, so Diplomat talking to us. He doesn't actually offer us anything now. I think we, uh, we're not allied to the Vale of Anduin, but we have good relations with them, so there's a possibility that we can ally, ally with them at an early convenience. Right, and Bri presented to our uh, our heir, Haldir, Neon Neil. Sure, we'll take you on. New mission, right, so we want to send an emissary to the Vale of Anduin. We'll be rewarded with some military units, okay. Well, if we get lucky, he'll just talk to us and immediately um, fix this quest for us. Right, we got our end of turn report. We actually gained some money, but that's going to change very rapidly once we start sending our extra units over. We built the Hall of Song. We have our units, and we have our celebrations. Aragorn got married again. Good for him. Right, these two units are going to come over as well. Uh, I would actually stop on the way and take this fort, but I'm not too bothered about it. So, um, there's the target. Go right there. By the light of Elberith. Right, they have. Got an extra unit near Orc Raiders. Horrible unit, though, so that's all right. Elves. So we're going to go Scatter them. give the attack order. Next turn, we're going to be able to get in there. But before then, I'll probably try and get in there with my spy. I'm not gonna, I am not gonna. I don't want to do it yet. I don't think I... I don't even need to do it, really. Because even if I'm in there, if I'm going to siege them out anyway, there's not really any points. Right. So we got one unit here. Who has currently got free upkeep for sitting here. Um... I could put him in my capital instead, but I don't think I really need to. 
We're gonna recruit um, these two. I want to get a diplomat, so in case they don't talk to me, I can do the um, diplomat, my own diplomat. Because they'll give me some free units, and free units are good because we currently, whatever we get, we're gonna be able to get free upkeep for them in our capital anyway. So it, it literally doesn't hurt us at all as long as they're in our capital. If I move them out, of course, it'll cost us money. Um, I can't recruit any more units here, but I can't make a building. So I can make a hall of music, but that doesn't really do much for us. Um, roads are probably a good one. Yeah, I think the roads and grain exchange are... Oh, wow, the roads are... Oh my god, they're expensive. I think it's because, yeah, we already have dirt paths, so it's not like we don't have anything yet. Alright, yeah, we'll build the uh, grain exchange. This increases our tradable goods. I think we are trading with one faction currently. Maybe more. Well, we're trading with them. Not sure if we have any relations with uh, anyone else, like... Vale of Anduin. No, we just have good relations, but we're not actually doing anything with them right now. Right. Uh, that's another turn. I mean, we might as well just have a look around a little bit here. See if we can see any units. Doesn't look like it for now. Alright. Let's see. Maybe they'll just come out and attack me. Very unlikely, but who knows. Oh, there's a Radagast again. Is he actually offering me something this time? Looks like he's doing something. Bowing and stuff. Trade rights, right. What about some trade rights on map info? Demanding. What do you want for I this? Say we are not convinced. Yeah, I don't. Okay. There's no way I'm gonna be able to get anywhere near what they want, so let's take the trade rights. It's good to see we could reach them. until we meet again. All right. So I think that solves our mission for us. We don't actually have to send an emissary over to them at all, as long as like as long as we engage in trade and succeed on something, I think it solves the mission for us. Oh, they're moving units out. I'm not sure what that is, but that might be one or two units right there, making stuff a little easier for us. That was a long line that we could see their movement of. They were planning on moving very far to the north somewhere. We just want to get take out their capital as fast as possible. All right, they got some Camel Shadow Guard and Camel Shadow Bows in here. I think maybe they've uh, sort of hard scripted it to make it so that they recruit those units uh, every single time, because there's no way for me to have gotten here any faster. Oh, this unit also gains some men, unless it's a different general, I'm not sure. 47 now. Um, but yeah, I think these are like hard scripted to be made before you could ac actually ever oh. reach them, but that's okay. We're going to siege them regardless. They might come out and attack me, honestly, but they probably won't because they're they're neatly in their town, aren't they? I don't think I'm actually going to move them in because I'm going to siege them out regardless. Them. So, I'm going to do that. Have your weapons ready, and yes, my lord. next turn we'll be able to get there, so that's alright. Relations worsened with the Shadow, Shadow of Mordor. Relations approved the Vilvanduin. Agent recruited our diplomat. We made the Hall of Music. We are losing money. That makes sense. And we got two Lorian Archer units here. Alright, so I could actually send those over as well. Yes, my lord. And get them in there, but it's it's just fairly pointless right now because it would just make it means that we it, it costs us money to do so essentially. We'll be paying upkeep for those. What I will do though is I'll put one unit in this fort here. Will I do that? I'll do it and I'll probably move him back next turn. Lands. Just so we own this now. Um, right. Light. So we've finished our building. We're currently... Not, we're still building something there. We don't, we're not building anything here, so we probably should build something. So I think it makes sense to build the Grain Exchange here as well. It takes two turns. We're probably going to go broke before we take this town, because they've got 12 turns. Oh my god, 12. Last time I did this it was nine, so I'm not sure what happened there, but my lord. And my spy wasn't in there last time either. Well, yeah, we're we're gonna be sieging them out. I could always just uh, eventually attack them anyway, but they've got like uh, ballista towers and stuff. I think here. Yeah, um, it says Gondor. That's just it's not a bug. It's just a limitation of the mod apparently. Um, but yeah, if we attack them, even if our units are low, we're still gonna take a lot of losses. So I'm gonna try not to do that. Maybe I will just send this unit over as well, just to make our odds even better. In case I do need to attack. As long as I keep one unit each of the towns, we're going to be good. Or maybe it'll just come out, because they think they've got such a demanding force. They did send a unit north just now, so they might send that one down south again. Who knows? I find, I find it unlikely, though, but you never know. My experience of this game is so low that I really don't know what I'm talking about. But they are giving us another turn, so that means that we can at least get our two extra units in there. Dol Guldur is besieged. Which is good. Oh, and we're still losing money, which makes sense. We made our grain exchange. 
We recruited our Lorian sentries, and our relations relations have worsened once more. Alright, so 11 more turns. We've got a fairly strong force here now. I mean, only two units, melee units, but even so. Um, oh, there's a diplomat. I was going to say, what the hell? Right. I forgot to move him last turn. That's unfortunate and kind of silly. I'm going to go up towards the Vale of Anduin, and Stopping here. up here is the Woodland Realm, uh, Deal, Erebor, etc. So we're going to go talk to all of them. Tomorrow's journey and planned out. possibly get map information to Vale of Anduin after all, which is what I do want, actually. Alright, so I could pay another 315, and, but I have an extra unit in here. This gives us four, four archers, which is kind of overkill, but I'm going to do it. Swiftly. My Lord. Hopefully you'll be safe getting there. Approaching. Keep our spy roaming around looking for enemies, etc. But still owned by the Vil Vanduin, so that's good for us. Alright, so we've got an extra unit in here, so I could I could even send another unit into this different fort now. For the light. Um, but I don't think I want to. Just keep our main forces in these towns here. Yes, my lord. Um Right. That's actually no, I could build another building here, which I probably should do. Let's see what we can do. We can make the market, which costs twelve hundred and thirty five. Can make this, but I don't know how good the partial letter is if we don't recruit our units there. Probably be better in the other town. Farm costs quite a bit of money. Let's go for the market. I don't know. I think we're gonna go broke if I do that pretty quickly. Let's go for that. I'm probably still gonna go broke, but we'll build that one in Karos Galadon as well. We're gonna make this place into recruitment place at some point too, anyway. So then it'll it'll come into play then. Um. Anyway, let's keep going. We're gonna go broke, like, that's just, that's gonna happen. There's no way we can really get around that. Especially now that I moved an extra unit over as well, which probably wasn't necessary. But it makes it so we have four archers, and I like even numbers more than uneven, so that's really the only reason I did that. Oh, there's some extra forces. We can get that unit in there, though, so if they decide to attack us, then I made the right call on getting an extra unit over here. Not sure what this I'm is. It's a general on another unit, which is not a terrible force. Oh, we can't actually get him in. That's unfortunate. I thought we could. Also, I thought you, um... I thought the enemy lost units as you besieged them, but I haven't really seen that happen yet. Maybe it takes, like, maybe it's only after a certain amount of turns. Well, we might be in a bit of trouble here, but I think we'll be alright. I can also... possibly set up an ambush. I'm not sure how you determine where an ambush would be. Maybe only actual generals can do that. Either way, we will probably want to set up here, and then we can just get this unit in there next turn. War declared Isengard of Rohan, not really a surprise there. Made our grain exchange there as well, and we are definitely losing money quite rapidly. So I could now decide to make the letter tanner here as well, but then we're going to be broke even faster. We can retrain that unit. I wonder if that's because... No, we haven't made a letter tanner yet, so I'm not sure what that retraining will even do, but... So I don't think we have any any buildings that give us any increase in units or anything like that. So I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure we'll figure it out at some point. Um, let's up our tax rate a little bit. That will save us a little bit of money. It's not really what I want to do right now, but... Me. I think if we get attacked, we might be alright. We These two units are absolutely amazing. I actually haven't looked at them yet. So this is the Albarath Guard. 16 attack, 33 defense, and they've got 103 men in there, which is pretty good. And Haldir has the Galadriel March Wardens, which is apparently our best unit. 17 melee attack, which is insane. 10 missile attack, which is also really good. And then 31 defense and 90 men in there. 725 upkeep though, so a pretty expensive unit. They can also use sharpened stakes, which is quite good. And they're skilled against mountains, which is also quite good. Didn't actually realize they had that. So that's a, an archer, like a really good archer, really good melee, and they're also counter against Cav, so... What more do you want, right? Oh, I didn't actually move my spy, nor my... Diplomats, so I think my diplomat moved regardless. I'm pretty sure I set him up to go quite far. I don't remember exactly Off to a great start forgetting about everything that we're supposed to be doing Nope, they're going straight up past us. That's fine. I guess they could be going for my capital, but we have two units there So that shouldn't be an issue All right, that sounds good. Means we can lights. get this unit in there this is the way. Give us an extra unit Half is blocked for our diplomat. Okay, so he did actually move, but only a little bit because we got stuck, but that's okay. Uh, we are, yeah, we're definitely losing money, judging from the fact that we're now negative, but we're gonna have to deal with that. 
Um, at least we've made a bunch more buildings. Once we take this town, we should start going up again. Because we'll get some free upkeep, I think. Um, and then, I mean, just from the fact that we're going to take this and then we're going to move on to take more stuff. I want to send him east a little bit. I want to see if there's any other units around here or perhaps other towns of, of, of which we can tell that they've been taken by someone. Reaches of Mirkwood. Okay, so the Reaches of Mirkwood, wherever that is, wherever the town is for that, has been taken by them as well. So they do own more than one town right now. Looks like that might be the only thing. Unless they own more to the east as well. Either way, we're going to actually end the episode here. So we got a, we got a siege of another nine turns. So this, this could be a pretty boring start for this campaign, but... I think um, we're going to go through those nine turns for sure next time, so we'll, um, we'll get a fight on our hands, I imagine. So until then, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Next time we're going to do that, until then have a good day and goodbye.